Once stairs have been created, we can change their sketch and properties in order to produce new shapes and steepnesses. First, we will select the stairs and then select the Edit Sketch tool. Now we will create new boundary lines for our sketch. Let us start by creating boundaries that taper off as the stairs get higher. After the new boundary lines have been created, we can use the Modify tool to select and delete the old ones. In our sketch, notice that our riser lines do not extend all the way to the boundary lines. However, when we select the green check mark to finish the sketch, Revit automatically extends the risers. After finishing the sketch, we must check to make sure that the risers are still going in the right direction. Then, switching to a 3D view, we can see our completed staircase. Boundary lines can also be edited for other stairs, such as L shapes. Once again, select the stairs and open the Edit Sketch tool. Using a curved boundary line, let us modify the sketch of our stairs. Once completed, let's delete the old boundary line and finish the sketch. We can now see the finished stair in our 3D view. Risers can also be modified using this same technique. After selecting the stairs, open the Edit Sketch tool, but instead of creating new boundary lines, we can choose to make new riser lines. Now, let's create a new riser. Again, we will use the Modify tool to delete the old riser. We can do this multiple times for different risers. Once all the new risers have been created and the old ones have been deleted, we can complete our sketch. Let's return to our 3D view to see the completed stairs. Once a stair has been placed, we can change the stair and railing type. After selecting the stair, we can assign it a new type. Multiple types are available for us to use. We will start by selecting Residential Open Two Sides. Notice the different stair, but how the railing stays the same. This process can be repeated until we are satisfied with the type we have chosen. Railings can be treated in much the same way as the stairs themselves. Let's select the railing and change its type until we are satisfied. Both railings and the stairs themselves are separate elements, and so their types must all be changed independently of one another. By editing type properties, we can create steeper or shallower stairs. Open the Stairs tool and select Edit Type. To create a new steeper stair, let's first duplicate an existing type. Choose Residential Open Riser, duplicate it, and rename the new type Residential Open Riser Steep. By default, Revit sets the minimum tread depth to 11 inches and the maximum riser height to 7 inches. Let us change the minimum tread depth to 8 inches. Let's now change the maximum riser height to 11 inches. Select ap selecting apply will create our steeper selecting apply will create our steeper stair type. Notice that Revit will now calculate the desired number of stairs based on an actual tread depth and a target riser height. Let us sketch a run, finish the sketch, and then move the stairs into position. Switching to the 3D view, we can now compare the steepness Switching to the 3D view, we can now compare the steepness of our new stair to the much shallower steepness of Revit's default settings.
Using what we have learned, using what we have learned, we can now make spiral stairs. Select the stair tool and sketch a spiral run line. First, let's select the desired radius of our spiral. Once selected, we can place riser lines in the same way we did with the straight stairs by dragging our cursor along the run line. The number of risers created and remaining will change as risers are placed or removed. Once all the risers have been created, we can now finish our sketch. After reversing the direction of the stairs, we can return to the 3D view to see what we have created. For longer run lengths, this technique can present us with some problems. To demonstrate this, let us create a shallower stair type. Open the stair tool, edit the type properties, duplicate the residential open riser type, and rename it residential open riser shallow. Next, let us decrease the maximum riser height, which will increase the number of steps needed to reach the second floor. This will in turn make it necessary to place a longer run line. Using this new type, we will begin placing the spiral staircase after selecting the radius of the spiral. However, Revit will not allow us to place a run line on top of another run line. Therefore, once 360 degrees is reached, the direction of the stair changes, or the riser count starts over. Essentially, the steepness of our stair type is too shallow to make a complete spiral. To fix this, we can edit the stair properties. To increase the steepness of the stairs, we can decrease the actual tread depth. By changing this value, Revit will warn us that we are overriding a type property. Let's select OK to accept this override. To place the new stair, select a radius and draw the run line. By making the stairs steeper, we are now able to place all of the risers. We can now finish the sketch, change the direction of the stairs, and then return to the 3D view to see our final spiral stair. And then return to the 3D view to see our final spiral stair. 